Chapter 554 Lord Adair nodded lightly as Fury and Edward exchanged glances. Edward could see what his father was trying to say through his eyes, he was encouraging him to approach Faria personally about the marriage proposal. After a while, Faria came into the house. She was a little surprised to see Fury and Edward at her house, however, she quickly composed herself and greeted them politely. Fury smiled and said, Hi, Faria. Your grandfather and I were just talking about you. Faria asked in astonishment, Talking about me? May I know what's the agenda? Edward looked at Faria intensely and said, Faria, we've known each other since we were kids, so we can be regarded as half-childhood sweethearts, right? Besides, our families have been friends for decades, so we wish to cement old ties by marriage. Hence, I asked my father to come and offer a marriage proposal to your grandfather, and he said to respect your decision. May I know if you would give me a chance? Faria stuttered awkwardly, Edward, we have not seen each other for some time, isn't it a bit too abrupt for you to say this? Oh, if you think I'm being too abrupt, we can start slowly by dating and eventually cultivating our relationship. What do you think? Faria looked at her grandfather for help and then shook her head apologetically, I'm so sorry, Edward. I've already got someone in my mind. Edward was flustered but he continued, Faria, your grandfather said that the man you like is an ordinary man who is not part of a prominent family. As the granddaughter of the prestigious Adair family, you will be a laughingstock if you marry such an ordinary man. No, I won't, Faria said firmly. You should marry the love of your life. If you get married for other reasons, it violates the pure essence of marriage. Then, she tried to persuade him, Edward, you said it yourself. We have known each other since young. I would like to offer a piece of advice, don't choose your spouse for the sake of the family's benefit. The marriage will not last, let alone be happy. Edward was extremely annoyed by her remarks. Damn it, I came here to ask for your hand. Not only did you reject me, but you also gave me such ridiculous and nonsensical advice. How dare you shun me like this? Fury was equally bewildered and shocked by Faria's response. Faria not only rejected his son's courtship, but she even used the excuse of an unhappy and short-lived diplomatic marriage to block his attempt to a dead end. She was rejecting Edward through and through. The more amazed he was toward Faria's wittiness, the more he hoped that Faria could become his daughter-in-law. She would be an excellent plus one to his son. From this point on, he was determined that the Whale family would take down the Adair family's granddaughter by all means. Hence, Fury stepped forward to pat Edward's shoulder and said with a smile, Son, you and Faria are so young, you should advocate freedom of love and marriage. So, don't rush it. You guys are still fresh, there is plenty of time ahead. Don't be upset for now. Lord Adair was a little relieved when Fury took a step back. He nodded gladly and gestured to Alfie, arrange a guest room each for Fury and Edward, be attentive to every detail, okay? Then, inform the kitchen staff to prepare lunch and entertain our guests at noon. Alfie bowed hurriedly and said to Fury and Edward, please follow me to the guest rooms. Fury nodded and said to the Adair family members, excuse us, we'll see you at the dining hall later. Then, they followed Alfie to their rooms. Once they closed the door, Edward shouted anxiously, Dad! How dare Lord Adair look down on me? What, am I not a suitable candidate for his precious granddaughter? Fury plastered a calm smile on his face and said, Kid, relax. I'll have someone to investigate if Faria truly has someone in her mind. If she does, I'll find out who he is.